now I'm honored to introduce Dr. Brooke Carlton. Uh, Dr. Brooke Carlton has uh, is a clinical professor in the UCSF Division of Palliative Medicine, and who is going to help us understand how palliative medicine care can enhance cancer care for patients living with brain tumors. Dr. Carlton, I'll turn it back over to you. I want to thank the conference organizers for having me. I, I am just so excited to, to be here, and I am so, it's such a privilege to be a part of the UCSF um, Brain Tumor Center and working with the spectacular team there to embed palliative care as a routine service for, for brain tumor patients. I'm going to be speaking today about how palliative care can enhance cancer care for patients living with brain tumors. I have no disclosures. So just to make sure that we're on the same page because there continues to be a lot of misconceptions about what palliative care really is. The definition that I like best of palliative care is that it's specialized team-based medical care for patients with serious illness. That typically includes physicians, nurses, social workers, chaplains, sometimes pharmacists, all working together to help support the quality of life of patients as well as their, their family and loved ones. The focus is really on providing relief from the symptoms and stress of a serious illness, whatever that is, in this case, brain tumors. It's really important to note, and this is a common misconception, that palliative care is not dependent on prognosis. And in addition to that, palliative care can be provided alongside curative or life prolonging treatments. So palliative care is an umbrella, underneath that is hospice, but palliative care is broader than that. And as you can see from, from this diagram here on the right, um, really the way that we think about it is that palliative care should be um, provided right alongside life prolonging care um, for, for many, many months if possible, or even years. So in terms of the need for brain tumor patients as specialists in symptom management and palliative care, um, and the data shows us this as well, we know that the symptom burden in patients who are living with brain tumors is really high. There was a study in 2016 out of MD Anderson that surveyed 621 patients who had primary brain tumors regarding their symptoms. More than half reported at least 10 concurrent symptoms and 40% reported at least three symptoms symptoms as moderate to severe. The most severe symptoms that the sample reported were fatigue, insomnia, distress, sadness, pain, drowsiness, irritability, difficulty speaking, and dry mouth. We also know that in this population of patients, advanced care planning early and often is even more important as people's symptoms change, cognitive decline sets in, people may become somnolent or also experience communication difficulties that make it difficult for them to share their wishes. Patients with brain tumors are referred less to palliative care um, and, and also later in their illness. There was a study by Walpert, um, which is a, is a few years old now, although I suspect this hasn't changed much, where the, the median referral from the time of referral to, to the time of death for patients with primary brain tumors to palliative care was anywhere between just 28 to 70 days. And at the same time, most patients with glioblastoma, when they've been educated on the accurate definition and role of palliative care, express interest in receiving these services earlier in their illness. In addition to all this, the diagnosis of glioblastoma in particular meets ASCO and NCCN guidelines calling for early palliative care intervention for all patients. But we still need more data on how to best incorporate comprehensive palliative care into routine neuro-oncology care. And there's actually a study that's ongoing right now in Germany that's randomizing uh, about 300 patients with glioblastoma to early palliative care versus regular car care. So that will be very interesting to, to look at. We became interested in embedding palliative care within the UCSF Brain Tumor Center a few years ago, probably about two years ago now. It was a patient that I shared with Dr. Jenny Taylor who spoke earlier. Um, he was a gentleman who was very eccentric and um, lived on his own, had a progressive glioblastoma and was doing very poorly at home. And um, we were having a lot of difficulty understanding if he understood his illness and the severity of his illness. And his decision-making was also not um, 
linear at times. So I got involved to try to help with that and on an elevator down from a joint family meeting with, with Dr. Taylor, um, we started thinking about an embedded palliative care clinic. Through a lot of work and planning with stakeholders and, um, and a lot of input and support from, from different folks within the Brain Tumor Center and, and outside of the center, we launched an embedded palliative care clinic in neuro-oncology in September of 2019. So it's been about a year and a half now. We saw very few patients in our very robust outpatient palliative care clinic prior to embedding, um, really just a couple people a year. But since we actually launched Embedded in the clinic, we've seen about 60 new patients in the clinic, um, which has totaled 245 unique visits. We offer a combination of clinic, telemedicine, and home visits, and um, since COVID-19 have been predominantly providing care by telemedicine. Over the past year or so, we've become increasingly integrated with the other supportive care services, which as you've heard in the talks before are exquisitely robust. And that's been both a joy as a clinician and also I think um, a real benefit to our patients to have their care more coordinated. For the patients that we've seen, the 60 patients that we've seen, you can see the average age here, it's around 60, not unsurprisingly, um, a, a few more men than women and 88% non-Hispanic white. About three quarters of the patients had glioblastoma, the others had other primary brain tumors and 66% of patients were on first line treatment. And by that, I mean um, uh, chemotherapy, first line chemotherapy. Uh, the median time since diagnosis of the patients that were referred to palliative care was eight months. Patients averaged four visits per, um, per patient. And we did a survey about, about six, eight months ago of a, of a select number of patients and caregivers. It was about 15 patients and caregivers and about 80% recommended the palliative care clinic to others. And 64% were more likely to recommend the UCSF Brain Tumor Center on the whole based on their experience in the palliative care clinic. This um, chart is, I'll walk you through it. This is hot off the presses. So I think one of the important things is just to understand what do we do in palliative care and how might we add value um, uh, in addition to the spectacular neuro-oncology care that a patient is getting. So um, what, what we've done here is we took the 14 patients who we've seen with glioblastoma who had also died and had three or more visits with our palliative care clinic. It was a total number of 99 encounters. The median time from diagnosis to referral for these glioblastoma patients was five months. So that's, that's very early um, in illness compared to, to national data. The patients on average had seven visits each with, with palliative care. And the median time between the patient's last visit and death was about 40 days. And part of the reason for that, why, why that's not a smaller number is because some of those patients then went on to hospice and we didn't, um, we didn't follow. We did follow some onto hospice, but some we didn't. So at the end of every visit, uh, we recorded the top three ways that the time was spent during the visit. So you can see here the options are relationship and rapport building, illness understanding, cancer treatment decisions, coping, symptom management, and advanced care planning. And then we also categorized all of the visits by the initial visit for which there were 14, because there was 14 patients, all the middle visits for which there were 71, and then the last visit for each patient. And we looked at the frequency of how those palliative care elements were, were done during those visits. So not surprisingly, as you can see in black, the highest number, um, rapport building was done in every single initial encounter. And over time, um, that became less frequent as, you, as we got to know the patient. The orange bar represents symptom management and the blue bar represents uh, patient and caregiver coping. Those are um, towards the top, the 60 and 80%. So those were very frequent across visits. Helping patients and families think through cancer treatment decisions um, rose as the patient was closer to life, which was, um, which was expected and is noted in green here. So I think that's one way to look at what we're doing in palliative care, supporting these patients. Another is through um, 
a case study. So for the sake of time, I'll go through this really quickly, but this was a patient we saw early on in the palliative care clinic. He was a 57 year old man who was referred to palliative care. He had a glioblastoma that was diagnosed in December of 2018. Um, he had received surgery, radiation, and, um, and Timidar, and he was referred for mood and coping. So we saw him over the course of about six months. For the sake of time, I won't go through every visit, but I did just want to highlight a few things. Um, our initial visits really focused on symptom management. Some of our visits were also joint with the neuro-oncology social worker, Rosemary Rossby. And so um, we also spent a lot of time digging into some complicated family dynamics that became apparent. And then as things went along, as you can see, there was a joint visit in, in October with, um, with the patient's neuro-oncologist and myself, the palliative care doctor, when his disease progressed to talk about whether or not to proceed with CCNU or to consider hospice instead. We also did a home visit in October with our social worker, myself and the social worker. And um, at that visit, we really focused on advanced care planning and planning a move to Chicago, which is where he wanted to be when he died. He eventually transitioned to Chicago. Um, I helped facilitate a referral to home hospice and a warm handover with the team there. And he died um, this past February in 2020. So I think that's another way to look at what we do. Uh, just a couple comments to highlight here, uh, clinician comments. I'll just read one for the sake of time um, to be respectful of, of, of everyone's time here. Um, having an integrated palliative care team has provided an invaluable resource to patients both throughout treatment for the management of refractory symptoms, as well as the later stages of their disease and coping with end of life and the transition to a focus on symptomatic care. As a provider, it has enabled me to care for patients and their loved ones seamlessly in all aspects of life. Uh, here are a couple patient and caregiver uh, comments. One, com one comment from a uh, caregiver palliative care was essential for my husband and family to adapt to the changes glioblastoma causes. My husband's symptoms were erratic and palliative care helped us navigate the causes and solutions to bring comfort and peace. So in summary, I just wanted to, um, to end with one summary slide on uh, how, how palliative care can help patients who are living with brain cancer. There's a high symptom burden and we have the time and expertise to help um, address those in collaboration with the neuro-oncologist. We can help facilitate early goals of care and advanced care planning conversations and continue to have these conversations over time. And I do think being an experienced palliative care doctor that there are times that patients feel more comfortable having those conversations with someone um, outside of their oncologic care who's, who's the one holding the keys to the, to the cancer treatment. We can help navigate challenging interpersonal dynamics, particularly using our interprofessional team. Um, we really like to stagger our visits with the neuro-oncologist visits so we can be an extra set of eyes and ears and hopefully catch things or help catch a new symptom or decline um, before it becomes an emergency. We can add value through telemedicine and particularly through home visits. I know this is something that we're really interested in, in thinking more about and expanding. And then um, I've also just been really impressed and really quite a privilege to help support the neuro-oncologists as they care for, for their brain tumor patients and, and bearing witness to how much they care for their patients and, and how much they suffer too as they, as they lose their patients as well. Finally, just a plug, um, we probably can embed palliative care in every neuro-oncology clinic throughout the country, although that would be a goal. So just a, a few plugs for folks. These are some great palliative care resources to know about. The first is getpalliativecare.org, which is a website that you can go on to find out where palliative care is available locally to you. We also have a couple handbooks. We have a handbook for, for patients and caregivers who are undergoing transitions in care, particularly focused on palliative care and end of life. That is the second link here. There's also one that's available for clinicians on palliative and end of life care for, for patients with brain tumors. And then finally, if you wanted to brush up on your own communication skills, I can't highly recommend enough Vital Talk, which is a nonprofit organization focused on preparing clinicians to have um, compassionate, um, open, and effective conversations with patients and families with serious illness. 
So with that, I will say thank you very much for having me. Happy to take any questions in the Q&A.